Morning everybody, we're here to talk about the 70cc Uber scooter today. We're going to do some brake changes, we're going to do some gearbox work, we're going to do a few things because there's a number of people not sure how to adjust things and seeing as we're the original designers of the product, we thought we'd run through it and give you the load on how it should or shouldn't be set up correctly, that's the right way. I just happened to have today the original gearbox that I, that I built in uh, 2001. This is the original handmade sample that I built all those years ago and as you can see the, the one in the vehicle of production today is almost n not changed from the original design. So we stayed with this design because it worked really well the last 10 years. So we thought this was a good idea to keep. So let me show you how the production one comes apart. Now we're going to remove the gearbox. We're going to take the plates off the engine and remove the gearbox so we can put it on the top of the deck of the bike so we can work on it. This, the, the gearbox is easily removed with a couple of bolts and you can put the gearbox on the, on the scooter deck. Just remember to always put a cloth down so you don't scratch the deck of the bike. Right, we're about to remove the gearbox. You need a number 10 spanner and an Allen key and then we can remove all the gearbox parts to put the gearbox on the table. Let's do this. Now we're ready to remove the gearbox. The side plate's been removed so you just remove the simple side plate by taking out these few bolts and the one spacer and then you come and you loosen the, the, the engine bolts Take the spacers out so we don't lose them. Do not mix all the spacers up. The spacers have special lengths and the bolts also, also have the right length. If the bolts are used incorrectly, what will happen is the, the engine, the bolts will go through into the flywheel of the engine and the engine will not be able to turn. So it's very important these bolts are the right length when you put them back. So don't mix them up. Just put them in the order on the table where you can find them again. You know? Okay, then we remove the chain. And then the gearbox can come out and be put on the table, just like this. I normally put the gearbox upside down on the table, like that, so it can be seen and worked on easily. There it is. That's how you remove a gearbox of a two-speed 70cc uh, scooter. Very, very easy. The Uber gearbox is one of the easiest gearboxes to remove and, and work on. So, now we'll get into stripping the gearbox and setting up the gearbox the way it needs to be. We start stripping the gearbox by removing the, cl the clutch pressure plate. That's one of the most important parts of the gearbox, but, and that's the part that keeps the bike in second gear. So let's remove that now. We just loosen the, the, the lock nuts off, loosen the cable off, and then out your pressure plate. That comes out usually very, very easily. Put that on the table. There's one of the little clutch plates that's fallen out, but that's fine. We don't need that, so we turn it over. The next step, the tension on the gearbox is the part that just keeps the belt tight. So this tensioner, basically we, we loosen, loosen the tensioner off. off because then we can take the belts out the gearbox and now we just we just move the tensioner front to the front of the bike. Then, it, then the belts become very loose as you can see. Now the belts are loose on the bike and they can be removed easily. Like that. So remove the belts. Once the belts are removed, I can now remove the second gear system. This is our second gear system and leaving the first gear system behind. So all we do is we check that the one-way bearing feels good on the first gear. You make sure that it rotates one direction and not the other direction. Many people install the one-way gear the wrong way around. If you install the one-way gear wrong way around, the bike only goes in reverse. So it works in reverse, not forward. So just make sure your direction when you're assembling it is always correct. Once your first gear assembly is correct, then you're ready to assemble the second gear. As you can see, we have a clutch pressure plate system and you make sure the parts are all okay and working normally. So that's your pressure plate. We have a second gear roller and, and drive gear which has got a bearing inside. Make sure the oil and everything is not leaked out of it. We've got the belt for it. The belts on the scooter are the same. The belts on both sides are exactly the same. They should be 295 or 300 millimeter long. They're 295, they're both 295. So it doesn't matter which order you put the belts, they both can go on the same side. You know? There should be three pressure plates and two clutch plates. This is what happens. We always inspect the clutch plates to make sure they're not damaged and they may look a little bit worn but usually only when they are very, very smooth they need to be changed. But like now it's okay. If the pressure plates are very slippery, sometimes what you can do is you can take these and you can grind them on a grinder and make the surfaces a bit rougher which helps with the se second gear from slipping. Right, now we are ready to assemble the second gear system. We take a pressure plate, gearbox look, I mean, uh, pulley looks fine. Have a look and check it's all clean, bearing looks fine, clutch plate looks fine. We drop that in there, put 
put the clutch plate in there put a second pressure plate in that normally goes in just behind doesn't matter which one they're all pretty much the same so the back side of the roller the back side of the pulley gets two pressure plates and a clutch plate the front side gets one pressure plate and a and a and a clutch plate and a clutch plate like that right there it is that's basically sort of assembled ready to be as installed on the bike okay i've assembled the second gear system i've put the clutch plates in the back of the second gear ready to be assembled the thrust plate side we'll put in when we once the gear is on now we're ready to put it on the gearbox make sure the spaces the correct space is in there the space must be there and then we slide the clutch plates onto the gearbox like that that's it now second gear is in place that second gear is ready to go now we need to put the belt on the gearbox will not the belt will not be able to install unless this thing unless the tension and cam position is in the lowest if the tension is up the belt will not be able to install it must always be in the lowest position so this is the lowest position now you can put the belt on once the belt is installed then we will lift the tension and position so it tightens the belts you, know? you want to install the pressure plate most people get this completely wrong the pressure plate needs to be installed properly to make it work properly so what we do is we just slide it on the shaft like this and then pop it back on and then these little nuts we, t we turn the nuts up and we the, the nuts have to be positioned in such a way that they're in the right place so that the clutch can adjust this bolt is actually a spring the bolt is used as a bolt to hold the clutch plate but it also is a spring so it acts as a spring to take it out of gear when you release the cable so have a look i'll show you the right position now how to now set we're it gonna up set up the clutch plate the clutch plate motion is the most important part of the whole gearbox if this is set up incorrectly the gearbox will not select gears properly and will cause heat inside the gearbox the nuts are in place and but the most important thing is if you look at my finger I'm, I'm pushing the pressure plate and it's releasing but very slightly so it's not really enough so what i need to do is i need to loosen this off and you just you, you keep releasing it until it until you get the right kind of spring action right now so let's so now I release it, when I hold it in and let go, it must release. It's still not releasing enough, so I go out a bit more. Right, there we are. So now you can see when I, when I pull it in and I release, the gear, it, releases the, it releases the plate. Pull it in, release, pull it in, release. It must release. If it doesn't release, it's then keeping the gear in second gear all the time and then you create friction and you create heat now we're going to adjust the belts and we're going to make the belts to the right tension as you can see the belts are a bit loose so we need to bring up the tension on the belts the first gear belt is always the tighter one so we make that one just about right and the second gear will always be slightly loose make sure your tensioner your tensioner cam is loose Then take a screwdriver and just simply all right so my belts are tight but a little bit too tight if the tights are, if the belts are tight they're going to break what we do is we just tap them, just gently tap them back till you get a little bit of play, play on the belt. A little bit of play on the belt, that feels right. So right now we're ready to tighten it. So then at that point you tighten the tensioner. Right, now the gearbox is fully assembled again and we check that it works nicely. And then what I do is I pull it into second and I check I, when I turn it backwards, it's actually very hard to turn backwards. When I release the pressure, it's easy to turn backwards. When I put the pressure back on, hard to turn backwards. Then you know your second gear is working normally. So it must go di both directions easily. But when I put the pressure on, it's hard to turn. Easy in this direction, hard to turn in this direction. And then when I let go, it's easy in both directions. Then I check that my tension is, is working, as you can see. Let me see, now we know second gear is, the adjustment on second gear is working fine. Remember, the cable tension is what keeps the bike in gear. So if the cable tension is too loose, it will not hold second gear. It will actually slip in second gear. If, it's, if the second gear is slipping, it starts to drive back on the first gear. But it creates friction in the second gear. So then it, the gearbox gets hot and can, can do damage. So always remember, you must have thumb pressure. If there's no thumb pressure, it's not going to hold second gear. So it must be hard to put into second gear. And once you're in first gear, must freewheel both directions easily. When I put in second gear, can't go one way, but can go the other way. Can't go that way, can go that way. So we take the gearbox, we just pick it up gently, 
I always start by uh, connecting the chain up, it just makes it easy for me. So I make sure we've got the right engine bolt, we pick up the right engine bolt, and then I start to install the engine bolt. And remember, all the bolts we fit now, we don't tighten any of them until they're all in place. So we put them into place, but we do not tighten them until they're right. So this top bolt will just do the, the hanging, will just hang the gearbox in place. And you loosen it just slightly and go back so, it's, so the, gearbox, the gearbox can still move freely and which allows us to line up all the bolts properly. Make sure everything's turning. Make sure the engine can pull start without catching the flywheel drum. If the engine seems free, no problems. The gearbox is turning freely, no problems. Then we start to tighten everything. We start by tightening the top mount, the gear engine clutch mount, tighten these up and uh, the belt must be nice, it mustn't be too tight, it must feel have a little bit of play but it obviously mustn't be loose enough to jump teeth. Second gear will always be a little bit looser but that's just how it is and it doesn't jump teeth this way. Check they rotate in both directions, put the gearbox in the, into second gear, cannot go backwards, can only go forwards. Gearbox is rotating beautifully forwards, cannot turn backwards. If it can turn backwards in your hand, the second gear will be slipping. That's not good. So you must always make sure there's enough cable tension to keep the gearbox in second gear. Check everything's tight, check all the nuts and bolts are in place. We take the mudguard, pop it back next to the clutch plates, just pop the mudguard on, and then pull the cloth out. Now the cloth, you shouldn't have any damage on your deck because the cloth has kept your deck clean, wipe your engine clean, and then you're ready to go. And I think that's how the second gear should be installed.